Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Just Yelled to Confusion Thursday Night Hangout. What's up? Hello, everyone. I, of course, am your host, Charlie, and I'm joined once again by the political guy himself, Azilius. It's good to see you, good people of the interwebs and internet in tubes. The masters of the zeros and ones. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, this is the Thursday Night Hangout. This is a weekly show where we try our best to cover the topics most important to you during the show. If you haven't submitted your topic, question, whatever it may be, just yet, have no fear. All you, all you got to do is drop it in the chat and we'll add it to the topic list for the show. If we unfortunately do run out of time, we will add it to the very next show. So without further ado, let us jump right into it. And the first thing is, I've got exciting news, maybe? Cal Drogo himself is, uh, Jason Momoa is going to be one of the leads in the upcoming Minecraft movie? And Fast X. I could care less about Fast and the Furious. Oh, dude, those shows are so fun. Come on. That's so stupid. What? They're so stupid. That's the whole point is like, you got to realize that like they're basically car enthusiasts who have become superheroes and they know this and they just go with it and they punch parking decks that collapse when they punch them. It's pretty awesome. And they go into space. Don't forget. Oh Christ. Have they gone to space yet? No, they went into space the last time and they even like cut, they made a very self-aware joke. Like, dude, we're in space. We didn't die. Like, they know what What's, they're doing. Is, is this next we're going to have extraterrestrials or interdimensional beings? No, but SpaceX is actually the perfect chance, or sorry, Fast X is actually the perfect chance to bring back, like, Vin Diesel's alter ego. So he can actually be like Xander Cage from XXX and sorry. Be like Triple X and, like, actually play that off and do the multiverse of Mr. Vin Diesel. I think now it's time to do it. No, I'm I'm thinking more like Jason X, like Jason kind of, you know, you know, cryogenically frozen in space and they find him. So we make like a little like left turn from like right now they're actually like basically saving the earth from like big global warming. Is now they actually like it turns like in a horde type of story where they're like saving it from like the devil themselves. That Ryan is in the same thought process there. Crossover Jason X and Fast and Furious X. I love it. Let's do it. What other X's do we have out there that are not like porn, basically? Because I think Final X's Fantasy X's Ten, porn, Final Fantasy what Ten. About. What's that? Final Fantasy Ten. Ooh, mm. yeah. I don't know if I would count a sequel. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, who from Final Fantasy Ten would be able to keep pace with Vin Diesel? <laughs> I don't even know. It's been so long since I've seen Final Fantasy X. Last time I... King of Fighters X. There's 10 King of Fighters? Hell yeah. Okay, a better question is, what games or movies out there actually have 10 iterations from which to draw from? Ooh, ooh, good question. Um, I, I would put... Zelius, well, while we're thinking about it, post that in the chat. What... what? Does Mario count? Because Mario over the years has to have had at least like 10 iterations. Mario has been in more than 10 video games. I don't know if he's been in 10 iterations. Ooh, that's good. Let me think about this. You you definitely had three on the NES and then Super uh, Super Mario World. You had at least, what, two? You had 64. Oh, man. So I Google this stuff. Uh, Land Before Time had like it has thirteen, I think. So what you're saying is they're gonna tr- they're gonna take a page out of Sharknado and they're gonna actually travel back in time to Littlefoot, the time loop, and kill Littlefoot's mother all over again. Oh God! Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's. I'm sure that there's. Well, okay, so. You got to uh, it. This is such a this is such a cop out. But you got all the sports games. They've had more than ten iterations. But I don't wouldn't want to put Madden in there. Well, of course. I mean, but LeBron James, you could like participate because he's an actor. 
Well, he's, but there's only been two Space Jams. True. Uh, ooh, Batman. How many Batmans have there been? There's been a lot of Batmans. I Let's mean, see, there was the three Chris, Chris Nolan, Nolan right? What's that? There was three by Nolan. Yeah. Then there was um, Batman. You had the campy one. You had what? You had Keaton. You had two of Keaton? One of Kilmer. One of Clooney. One of Ben Affleck. Do you count Superman ver- Batman versus Superman a Batman movie? For the sake of this... Well, I don't count the movie at all, really, for anything. But for the sake of this, yes. I heard it's just trash, but... Yeah, yes. Is there? That's a very mm-hmm. good question. I don't. I don't know. I think they're probably at nine. I think. Hold on, I'm googling. This could be movie number ten. Maybe this is the giant tenth Batman finale. Because you can't get bigger than the Fast and the Franchise fury. It's um, franchise. You got Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin. Uh. Okay. So that was. Three, then you had the Nolan three, then you had the Affleck one and a half, I guess. Mm. So seven and a half, and then you have the um, uh, Mister Sparkly one. Oh, but you also have Batman in the Justice Leagues. Do you okay? We we're talking cro- we're counting crossover movies. I am for the sake of this, yes. I mean, think about Jason. Fine. They, they, just, they don't, any, just choose the MCU. <laughs> They've got 10. Well, I don't know if Disney would allow that, though. I don't think they would allow the crossover material in that regard. Oh, come on. Yeah, Wouldn't it be oh. awesome to see Captain, or no, sorry, uh, uh, Falcon and Vin Diesel team up to go beat the next iteration of Hydra? Pokemon would be one. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. Pokemon is actually very interesting. And ironically, uh, two of the topics that we have to cover, one of them has to do with the new Batman movie, and one of them has to do with the third Pokemon movie. Because there's, depending on who there's you... There's already two Pokemon movies? Dude, there... Okay, so there's Detective Pikachu, and then there's a shit ton of Pokemon movies. There's a bunch of Pokemon movies that went to theater, and then there's like this deluge of Pokemon movies that went straight to... Um, uh, I was about to say straight to VHS, but no one half. Uh, I think uh, seven eighths of our audience. I'm choosing a random they fraction were that here. Bad. Would be like, That's what the hell is VHS? They just went to VHS. Went to VHS. St- straight to um, stores. There you go. That covers straight it, right? Video. I mean, video. Just straight video to video, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, works. fine. Anyways, yeah. I, I, it it really depends on how you look at Pokemon. Anyways, speaking of Pokemon, let's segue into uh, the next topic. That, of course, is that there is all of a sudden a lot of heat on the Disney Plus series WandaVision because apparently it is now being accused of stealing major plot points from the third official Pokemon movie. Wait, is the third official Pokemon movie out? Okay, once again, there are a shit ton of Pokemon movies that are out. You keep thinking Detective Pikachu. I'm almost 100% sure you keep thinking Detective Pikachu. There's only one of those. Okay, is the movie that is being accused from stealing from out? How is that? Yes, it's been out for a while. Have you seen it? I have not seen the third Pokemon movie. However, I have seen a ton of Pokemon movies. Um, and this is just an accusation now? I mean, WandaVision's been out for a while. It's not exactly like a new thing okay. in the last week. Remember, you, okay, let, let's 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 put that exact point into perspective here. Remember that it was like 10 or 15 years after X-Men the animated series came out that a small Polish development studio comes out and goes, "You stole our theme music." And it, they did. Holy crap. That opening to a- X-Men, which is phenomenal, was actually poached entirely from the small, anybody like, I think it was Polish, uh, TV show. I did not know that. Zelius, we talked about it on a show. Thanks for being dialed in, Zelius. 
We did? Yes, we did. Are you sure? I yeah. was I didn't have like a replacement cat that night. Replacement cat. Why would it what if what the number of cats or whatever cat you have. Like taking my spot is what I mean. Like oh. I just like stay on the couch and groom myself and she sat in my chair. That so night. what you're trying to say is that you're really Rose wearing a Zelius mask. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! The truth comes out. You're on to me. <laughs> okay. Um Zelius, if you can hear me, scream. <laughs> Meow. Exactly. Okay, so so really um apparently uh in the third Pokemon movie, the main character is stuck inside a um inside this like magical crystal world. And the only way that they can communicate with the outside world is through a TV, okay. which in WandaVision, um, uh, Wanda or Scarlet Witch, whatever you want to call her, creates this like idyllic town with all her magic and basically puts a magical box around it. And the only way that people can find out what's going on inside of it is that for some reason it is sending off TV signals. Actually, I know exactly why they're sending TV signals, but I don't want to give away too much. Um, but it's giving the only way that to find out what's going on inside it. Cause you can't, you can't, uh, go into the, well, I guess you could technically, but it's, you know, it's a box. Okay. It's a magical box. It's trying to keep shit out. Yep. Um, and the only way to find out what's going on is through like the TV. So you have that, um, let's see here. What was the other, I mean, okay. So, yeah. So I guess the question, I mean, this comes down to creative licensing right. or creative ideas is how much of the ideas are copywriting. I mean, take like groundhog dot groundhog day, for instance, and the idea of basically waking up each day with the same day repeated that you have to like basically figure out what to fix tons of movies and TV shows have done that same exact thing of the Groundhog Day. So does that mean like these other movies are therefore infringing on Groundhog Day? And I don't know if Groundhog Day actually got from somewhere or not. I'm um, sure that look, I'm sure they did. Um, but uh, that's where I struggle with like creative concepts like that is is that really copyrightable? Like the idea behind a show, basically, or a movie? Um, very good question. Um, I don't think it should be personally because, in this case, let's just say WandaVision was inspired by this Pokemon movie. Well, so what? Like, Pokemon had a human in it. Other TV movies. And, and they had a, and, and, and I, the, spoiler alert, but Pokemon movies have a shit ton of Pokemon in it. There whoa, is not a single whoa, Pokemon whoa, in whoa. WandaVision. So I just, when it comes to kind of like, I get the X Men thing where it's like, if it's a straight rip of the song, that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. But it comes to like the creative idea and reinterpreting it. And I have not seen the third Pokemon movie. There's 19, by the way. Wow, yeah. that's pretty insane. But I'm going to assume the fact that it's Wanda and um, Vision and everything else, it's still pretty dang different um, than Pokemon 3, just going on a limb here. And so I just have a hard time kind of taking those types of things seriously mm -hmm. or giving them too much credence to my own perfect world. Uh, and just, just because I mentioned it, there are 14 Land Before Times. Okay. Ryan says, I think some folks just look for stuff to pin on big companies. And and to be honest with you, this is the beauty of living in America. You could sue for anything and not be left out of the courts. Um, the I mean, You might be left out. Being stuck on a TV has been around for a long time in many movies. Agreed. Agreed. I just find it uh, the, the the other the other interesting thing is that it wasn't the studios it wasn't um the pokemon company or nintendo um uh, which by the way does not own the exclusive rights to pokemon which 
was a fun story like a couple years ago. But anyways, um, that it, it was just some bored person going, oh my God, look at this. They ripped it all off. If you And, and Zealys is right about this. If you really were to boil down many of the books, many of the movies, many of the TV series, and you start comparing them to other, um, you know, existing sources, you're going to see a lot of parallels. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have ever re- read uh, The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, it's the fucking Bible. It's the story of Jesus, okay? Or basically every fantasy series is basically a ripoff of Lord of the Rings. I mean, you have orcs and elves and high fantasy sorcery because of those. Or if you want to go really, really crazy, you could be like every single sci-fi fantasy movie that has dragons. Yes, it's Lord of the Rings or it's Dungeons and Dragons or it's um, or any space hero movie that has any type of laser weapons got to be based off of Star Wars or, if, you. you know, I, th- yeah, you get, you can draw. There's not a lot of truly unique properties out there in this day and age that you can't draw parallels or like per, uh, uh, comparisons between the two. It's not possible. It's, it's not, I mean, shit, I'm reading, actually I'm reading a series, um, Actually, I talked about this, uh, oh gosh, a couple of months ago. There is a, uh, there was an author out there who was hinting, who was, go- who was talking about all, it was a, um, it was a modern day, to be fair, Star Wars stole everything from Dune. See, there you go. There you go. Right there. Okay. Space opera. Ha ha. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I mean, there, there's a lot of, like, you know, biblical references as well with Star Wars. So Dune meets the Bible, okay? Um, so you're saying is Jesus needs to be resurrected again and just sue the shit out of everyone? <laughs> Jesus is going to pop up tomorrow and go, you're going to court. You're going to court. You're Actually, going to court. Pope is going to. The Vatican's going to be like, wait a second. <laughs> We've been missing out on this opportunity to increase our income at the Vatican. I, I, everyone. I jokingly say this, but at the same time, I think this shit would really happen. If the Vatican was part of the United States, they would have sued like everybody for, you know, ripping off a, a biblical story. Because once again, if you bury, you know, if you burrow down enough, you could draw a pair par- uh, comparisons. Anyways, what I was talking about. Or unauthorized public speaking from the Bible. Yeah. At church every Sunday. Oh Lord. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. Um, uh, we don't recognize your congregation. Therefore, you, sir, are under copyright infringement. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, what I was saying was there's there's a uh, there was a, a series of books. It was a, a modern day kind of like wizards. There's like a magical hidden world that mundane individuals don't see, but you know, shit's happening. And this author kept making reference to, uh, this powerful wizard that lives in a different city. Huh. And they never say it by name, but they say the city, which is Chicago, which immediately I know who that is. And that's not the same author. So, you know, if you like, Oh my God, he's picking reference to uh, an intellectual property. That's not his. So, which is st- okay. Look, if you're making pulp, uh, you know, pop culture references, I I don't think that's suable. Suable is that even a word? It is now, sir. Ha ha! Yes. Anyways, um, yes. Look, if you really bro- if you really boil it down every single video game, every single movie, every single book, you can draw parallels to existing properties. I I want to say that. Uh, Golden Compass, the author of the Golden Compass tried to sue somebody for a bit. Um, and, and I, I feel like, uh, I know that the author of Twilight's been sued a couple times because like, well, it was actually, uh, it was, it was one of my fanfics that you just stole right off and then you just build a series around it. Okay. Here's the danger of fanfics. Okay. The wild, wild west of fanfic. Oh dear. Look, here's the deal. If you have something original, if you believe it's original, <laughs> let me preface this. If it if you believe it is original, 
then publish it. Don't just, and what I mean by that is not post it. Post and publish two different things. Publish means you're taking credit for it. Posting is I'm throwing this up for everyone to enjoy. But I have a copyright amendment to everything I write on the internet, sir, including every single Facebook post. It says, this is not the property of Facebook. This is the property of Mr. Zelius. Therefore, they're wrong and I'm right. Here, here's a helpful hint to all those individuals out there who do want to uh, protect any and every single post or published thought that you want to do. Create your own website. And then post exclusively there. Okay. Then if someone, you know, someone down the roads posts something that's exactly yours, you could be like, ta-da, it's been there forever. Of course, knowing the big name companies, they'll probably just keep trying to extend the, the, um, the, uh, um, copyright. well, not the copyright. Uh, they'll try to extend the trial date. Oh yeah. Uh, until you're finally like, fine, you can have it because I had a really cool idea, but I can't spend any more money trying to defend my cool idea because yeah, you've got millions and millions that I've got like thousands of thousands, huge difference. You don't have like an infinite bank account to help bankroll Sadly, my no. perfectly valued lawsuit. Sadly, no. Oh, yes, it is tragic. Anyways, uh, one of the other topics that came up. Uh, this week, if I could find it, hold on one second. Oh my gosh, where'd he go? Um, we made mention of, oh, there it is. Uh, we made mention of Batman and all the iterations of Batman. Uh, someone, some news outlet decided to, uh, interview, uh, Jim Carrey about, uh, how he felt about the, um, the new Riddler and the uh, Mr. Sparkly Pants version of Spider-Man, uh, uh, Batman. Sorry, Rob Patterson will always be Mr. Sparkly to me. I'm sorry, I, I, and I've only watched one Twilight movie, but all I could think is just see, seeing him. It's he's not even Cedric Diggory to me. Okay, he is Mr. Sparkle Pants. Okay. See, I haven't seen any of the tainted movies. So that really doesn't affect my thought. And I actually liked him in Harry Potter. I thought he did good. No, no, I've got no problem with that. I'm just saying that what I think of Rob Patterson, I don't think of anything but Mr. Sparkly Pants. Well, maybe you need to see Sparkly Black. I don't know what that is. No, no. Uh, anyways, so uh, Jim Carrey was asked about, uh, who was the actor's name? Um uh, Paul Dano's ver Dano Dano's version of the Riddler, and to be honest with you, I feel like ever since Jim Carrey did um, Kick Ass Two, and then there was a lot of violence, and he kind he's kind of like shied away with with characters that are overly violent. Yeah. When I saw Tenant, it changed my mind about Rob Pattinson. I've never seen Tenant, so maybe it, it does it change it for the good. Ryan, because it changes for the good. Maybe I'll, I'll, you know, I'll maybe look into it. But, uh, anyways, so uh, I, I feel like, because I remember he was really excited about playing this like crazy character. Uh, Jim Carrey was really excited about playing this crazy character. I think his name was Sergeant Slot. No, not Sergeant Slot. Something close to that. Um, in Kick Ass Two, and then of course a lot of like in school violence or, or like you know violence happened and then he he stopped doing the uh the media tour the press tour uh promoting the movie because he's like I, I just don't you know we're promoting violence and uh, you know for for recreational fun and i don't want people to do that and so when they interviewed him uh he said that uh, he has mixed emotions about the very dark version of the riddler um he said that um uh, there's a spot of worry in me over gaff taping people's faces and encouraging people to do the same. Some sickos out there that might adopt that method. I do not. I do have a conscience about things I choose. Robotnik has cartoon bombs and no one gets hurt. I know there's a place for the Batman and I don't feel, want to criticize it, but it's not my kind of thing. It's very well done. Those movies are very well done. 
I mean, it seems like a pretty level-headed, reasonable response to me. I, I mean, I, yeah. he's got his reasons for doing his shows, and he's not, like, crapping on what they're doing. He's just very much like, yep, they're doing their thing, and I get it, but it's just not for me. And yeah. I, it's very See, the, the thing is, it, it's amazing what an educated answer is. And that's one. He's like, look, it's not my cup of tea. I, I think that there are going to be individuals out there who may take it the wrong way. But I think the guy did an amazing job. And and you can and he also hints at the fact that one of the reasons why he likes doing Robotnik is that it's cartoon bombs. And yeah. in the end, no one really gets hurt. I mean, yeah, Sonic gets blown up and thrown all over the place, but it's a CGI character. I do have a special place in my heart for, I know it was cheesy as hell, but I do have a special place in my heart for him as the Riddler and then Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face. Yeah. They were some of my favorite villains because it was so campy and just over the top that. Oh, yeah. And they just dug into those roles. And I love, I actually really enjoyed that Batman movie. I thought that it was. was uh, which one was that? That was Val Kilmer. I'm pretty sure. Right. But which what was the name of it? Batman or Batman Forever? Hold on. Let me see if I can. Oh, I, I can't remember which one it is. I feel like Batman Forever is the one with Arnold. That was not as good. Hold on, I'm, I'm I'm looking it up real quick because this is gonna bug me now. Uh, Batman and Robin was Arnold. Okay, yeah, you're right, you're right. So that means that maybe it was Batman Forever. Maybe it was Batman Forever. Hold on, we're looking it up because okay, there's Batman Returns, Batman Forever. Yeah, that's 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 coming. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, then you had Nicole Kidman and Chris O'Connell. What Nicole Kidman was in the third one? Yeah, you're right. You're right. 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 Yeah, she was Ivy. No, Nicole Kidman was not Ivy. That was Uma Thurman. Oh, you're right. My bad. My bad. God. There was a lot of people in that movie. Damn. I know. There it was. There it was. There it was. Um. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick pause to do our friends of the show, and um. So, these are the beautiful individuals that help us out in oh so many ways. So, to start her off. Let us start with the one and only Indie Cluster. The Indie Cluster is an organization of independent game developers that want to gain exposure by being involved in the community. The collective, they collectively journey to popular conferences, a traveling booth to help gain attention for their games. They make partnerships with local communities to bring games to the mainstream mindset. They highlight local, unusual, and rare concepts to challenge the paradigm of the common. They also host events to teach kids and minority groups about game development to hopefully one day enter the industry themselves. For more information, go to IndieCluster.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-S. Oh, Lord. I, let's start over again. I-N-D-I-E-C-L-U-S-T-E-R dot com. Now, of course, the next shout-out we got to give is... To Noodle Boy Media, who's currently at PAX East, by the way. Ooh, Noodle Boy Media, geez. founded in 2015 by Andrew Trent, Noodle Boy Media, previously Wet Kid 47 Media, is your choice for professional photo shoots and panel recordings at conventions. They pride themselves in providing a high level of professionalism, top notch experiences, and quality services. If you want more information to and to view their full list of services, check out Facebook.com slash Noodle Boy Media. And hopefully this amazing gentleman is still around, but the next shout out to friends of the show that we have to do is Hero Chiropractic. Hero Chiropractic is a unique healthcare practice set up by Ryan Moore, the company's focus to elevate a patient's experience of freedom, creative expression, and joy. They believe that everyone can be a hero and has incredible heroic potential inside themselves waiting to be unleashed. Hero Chiropractic focuses on mobile chiropractic care in the greater Atlanta area. They are committed to healing clients by creating a plan of action uniquely suited for each person. They make that plan of action as convenient and affordable as possible and most importantly suited to your individual needs. For more information go to HeroChiropractic.com And finally the gentleman, the maestro that has helped us out with our uh, intro and outro, ladies and gentlemen Crosspatch Creative. Need a new logo or want to work on a full branding and content strategy? Or maybe you need music or audio for your content. Crosspad Creative creates offers a 
whole host of solutions for individuals and small businesses. Just email Josh at crosspadcreative at gmail.com and see what he could do for you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, since we just introduced you to the friends of the show, it is time for us to switch gears ever so slightly to give a couple uh, Alter Confusion mentions. And the first one, which of course is always dear to our hearts, is that, ladies and gentlemen, I am very happy to tell you or remind you that Alter Confusion will be participating in Extra Life for the 11th straight year. Extra Life is gamers doing what they do best game to help sick and injured children at their children their chosen children's miracle necro hospital the money that we raise through extra life will go directly to children's health care of atlanta as unrestricted funds this means that the hospital decides where and how to spend the money to ensure the dollars we raise make the biggest impact in the lives of the kids they treat. So if you have the capacity to donate, please go to extra-life.org and search for Altered Confusion. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you are very interested in finding out how to become one, one of the ways to become a friend of the show, let us introduce you to the one and only uh, fact that we have a Patreon. Altered Confusion has a Patreon page to, uh, oh, sorry. All the confusion survives on love and support of fans like you. And so we have a Patreon page. Patreon, Patreon lets you, the fans, lovers, haters, supporters, interdimensional beings, devils, demons, gods, demigods, and ghouls and everything else to become active, active participants in the world the work we love through a monthly membership. This gives you access to exclusive content, community, and insight into our creative process. In exchange, we gain a bit more freedom to do our best work and the stability to, we need to build an even stronger career, creative career. Ladies and gentlemen, currently we have two tiers. One, two. The first tier is a $1 a month or $12 a year tier. And what that will do is gain early access to all of our playthroughs as well as the ability to take part in patron only posts and polls to help shape the future of Alter Confusion. Now, if you want to take a huge step up and by huge, I mean, eh, it's $5 a month or $60 a year. That's and that will get espresso, you, sir. Pardon? That's a whole espresso during the week. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, $5 a month or $60 a year will not only gain you everything at the $1 level, but it will also have your name or organization added to our thank you section to ev for every single Thursday night hangout. So, if you're interested in becoming a patron, all you got to do is go to patreon.com slash alterconfusion. Patreon spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com. <coughs> and ladies and gentlemen, just in case you want to go maybe the non-financial route, but you want to send something to Alter Confusion, maybe to showcase on our show or perhaps feed an obsession with either Mountain Dew or Funko Pops or uh, cat I guess food. cat food for for Rose, yes. i.e. Zelius. All you gotta do is mail it to one five five one Dunwoody. That's D U N W O O D Y Village Parkway. Number the super important. This number is the PO box number. If you do not put the PO box number there, it will not get to us. That's number eight eight two seven six. The city is Dunwoody, D-U-N-W-O-O-D-Y. State is Georgia, 30338. And I have a... All of a sudden, I have a sneaky suspicion that we have dropped streaming on one of our platforms. Because we are... There we go. Now it's starting... Nope. <laughs> Whatever. I see them on Facebook and Twitch. Good. Then it must be YouTube that's struggling. Anyway. Oh, YouTube. Damn you, YouTube. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, let us continue with our chit-chat, our, uh, the next news story. Uh, actually, this is an interesting, okay, quick point here. Uh, Netflix has come out and said that they estimate that over 100 million households are not paying for Netflix. They believe that nearly a third of their viewers are mooching off someone else's Netflix account. That's a lot. It is. It is. And, you know, of course, 
you got people go, well, but you know, it's, it's a family member or it's a friend that's just trying to help me out. So I could watch that one series. Then I end up watching 17 different series on Netflix. I mean, for Netflix or any of the streaming services for that matter, I really don't have any sympathy for those basically outside of that household. If they do crack down on account sharing. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm very much of the opinion where ethically speaking, it's kind of one account per a household. Um, now I know that gets a little bit nebulous, like for people who travel and I know there's the outliers. I totally get that. Or for, divorce families. I mean, I, I know this is cold hearted, but if you're divorced and you're separated, get two different accounts. Um, that's just, you're no longer together. To me, it's that household is kind of, to me, that kind of moral line of where one account, one household is. To be um, totally honest with you, if Netflix, I mean, it. first of all, I, I do not like how YouTube TV does their shit, but they lock that shit down. It is, it is increasingly difficult to watch anything outside your own fucking zip code, let alone someone try to borrow your account. Well, I think YouTube TV... I wonder if they have different different situation though, because the local channels, and I don't know if they have some pushback from like you know the CBSs and the NBCs of like whoa whoa whoa. No, you I mean know? like if 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 I I don't have YouTube TV, but I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm very tempted to go back because uh, Hulu does not have NBA TV, and for some fucked up reason. Half of the NBA playoffs is on NBA TV. <clears throat> I mean, that is a super, it, there is irony in there where, you know, I love the streaming age. Yeah. You know, I'm never, nobody's going back to cable. No. But at the same time, like there's certain areas where streaming should have made our lives so much simpler. And yet, I know as you can attest to, if anything, there's ways that this streaming world has actually made our lives more complicated for sometimes watching certain content. So Usually sports. NBA or sports in general can be a giant, like all most of us want is, I know it's not going to happen, but I just want to pay $10 a month to just watch UGA games and Falcons games. That's what I want. Right, to that level of a la carte will never happen because I know. the only way the streamers, the only way that the cable uh, telecommunication companies and streaming companies work at, or able to make a feasible uh, subscription fee is that they bundle in a bunch of shit along with it, so you get all this extra gobbledygook. But the but the biggest problem when it comes to sports is you have these regional sports networks who. Basically, unless you allow them to basically give it to you up the kazoo, uh, they're not going to allow you to stream it. So there's no Fox Sports South on like anything but one cable company. Uh, so I don't get to see any of the Hawks games. I don't get to see there's it, that that package also affects like a bunch of the ACC basketball games and football games. Um uh, and then, of course, you know, if you get like if you have uh, YouTube TV and you have uh, NBA TV, if your game is chosen on MB NBA TV, you can't watch it because in your market, you're supposed to do the original uh, Fox Sports. So that gets blacked out. Uh, I know it's it's frustrating. Same, um, same with if it's uh, if it's a, if. If it's an ACC game or even an SEC game or any college college sports where you could do it through ESPN has like an ESPN three version of it. If it's picked up by a regional sports network, it will be blacked out except for that regional sports network, which of course you don't have. Therefore, you can't watch the game. That just hurts my brain. <clears throat> yes, it hurts my heart, too. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. It's very hard to continue to be a fan of something if you can't watch it. I hear that, yo. It, it, mm, Did yeah. you see that play last night? No, because my regional Fox Sports Network is a dick. 
They don't actually want you to see the game. No, they just want everybody to they they want the streaming company to pay them an exorbitant amount of money to see the game. Anyways, moving on, YouTube but not YouTube TV. Uh, there is an interesting. Um, it's we we are now, of course, in the age of you know, thankfully, because Alter Confusion does this. We post playthroughs of video games. And there's a there is a huge chunk there's a huge chunk of individuals out there who do not play games they just watch playthroughs. Now it seems that there that there is a subset or I guess an additional set of individuals out there who are merging for I I you know uh, for example there's a guy out there who put in I don't know sixty hours into some JRPG. Yep. And he enjoyed every, well, well, let's just go Kingdom Hearts. Sure. Uh, I, you know, I put all this time into Kingdom Hearts. And I really would like to enjoy all of the, you know, the twisted turds and ups and downs of Kingdom Hearts. There is this culture that's starting to emerge of individuals who won't play the game, even if they own it. They'll just watch someone else play it on YouTube for their replay. Thoughts? That's kind of weird to me. Not going to lie. Yes. I'm like, okay, so you own the game and you've successfully completed it, but you want to experience it again. Why would you experience through the eyes of someone else? Because now you're you are now a passive you know, you're a passive passenger. You no longer get to make those decisions of, you know, where to go next or, you know, which um which dialogue choice you choose. So what you're saying is the developer needs to release a movie version of every game that they release and post that also on the YouTube. I think there's quite a, there's, there's these wonderful games called, um, Oh shit. What's the, what's actually called Xeno saga, which everyone just calls Xeno cinema, which cause the, a, a lot of the time you're just watching a movie because of all the cutscenes, Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, to each their own, right? Um, Ryan says well, you probably, I mean, I, probably you would, you could see someone else's excitement of something for the first time again if they haven't played before. That's true. You could, you could maybe recapture some of that excitement through the eyes of someone else. I mean, that's a huge thing with music videos on YouTube nowadays. Is the, uh, I don't know if it's called us in video games, but in music, it's called the reaction scene, and that's a big deal. Um, the big deal on that, though, is usually you're listening to somebody who has, like, professional musical insight into, you know, you hear something cool, what actually makes it cool. Yeah, but the problem is that the majority of the times I've watched reaction movies, like, professional vocalists or professional guitarists, and they're like, yep. you know, oh, my God, look how off-key is. And I just like, I, I'd rather just punch you in the face. I, th I thoroughly enjoyed this. I wanted to be, I wanted you to be in my camp, but you decided to be a douchebag about it. I've never actually seen that. And all the ones I've seen is actually like a negative reaction. There, there is a, uh, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. There is a YouTuber. I can't remember his name. Uh, uh, that, uh, has gone after Dave Grohl many a times. And actually a lot of rock musician, uh, guitarists because like, they don't really know how to play the guitar. They're just they're just kind of fumbling through it. I'm like, but it's still beautiful music, damn it. <laughs> Can't you enjoy the music? Look look how look how sloppy they're, you know, strumming her fingers. I'm like, Jesus he Christ. He does realize most music videos are not actually live, right? Huh? Yeah, I know. No, like whoever's watching that video, I want to be like, they're not actually playing live. They're actually not like, playing. That, that's what I mean. Yeah, like it's all dubbed over, obviously, for the original version, and then they act like they're playing in the music video, but they're not actually like recording that audio as they're playing it. Okay, so Ryan, Ryan, uh, the the reaction, I would actually, I'd be okay with doing like reaction videos for the announcement of like a new Smash Brothers Smash Brothers character, or the announcement yeah. that Blizzard has started giving a shit about their gaming community is actually going to do something about, you know, Overwatch or revamp something or uh, 
finally give Bobby Kotick his due and throw him into a very dark, dark hole with no chance to escape. But Play him with the uh, interns. huh? Play him with the interns. Yeah, <laughs> they're getting paid now. <laughs> he can get paid what the intern gets paid. <laughs> Actually, speaking of which, let's since I brought up Bobby Kotick, which it, it's really pissed me off, let's throw another monkey rich twist into it. It turns out that one of the high-ranking Facebook execs, a woman by the name of Cheryl Sandberg, apparently utilizing her political clout between 2016 and 2019 buried news stories about restraining orders that were filed against Bobby Kotick. One of the main reasons at the time she was dating him. I am shocked. Uh, so basically, and, and, but here, but here's the thing that is like, really, you know, like if, in my mind, the kick in the nuts for her, uh, credibility. And that is that apparently, she uh, she wrote a book called Lean In, a book about empowering women in the workplace and the running of an organization, organization yeah, and running of an organization by the same name. Apparently, what she did is that she caught wind of the Daily Mail was planning to run a story about the, uh, I think it was um, a restraining order and she got to the Daily Mail, and of course, because she's a very important person, go, oh, by the way, you don't need to print that. The lady has, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, rescinded her want for a restraining order. Of course, she didn't. But, you know, I'm just like, oh, my God. Seriously? <sighs> wow. 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 Yeah, I got nothing on that. That, Yeah. There, I think the story speaks for itself. There, of course, I think it was like a couple of weeks ago. It turns out that the governor might have also interfered with the legal. Uh, the governor of California apparently was was putting pressure on the um, the law office that was trying to do the the equal pay and sexual harassment lawsuit, causing the the boss to uh, to quit the law firm and then the second in command to resign because like, look, if, if, if the governor is going to throw his weight around and try to bury stuff and change shit, then there's no reason for us to do this. It's already a sunken thing. So why are we even doing it? Already being sabotaged. Aye, aye, aye. And by the way, that, that lady at Facebook, she didn't do it once. She did it multiple times. She hmm. buried, she, she helped bury stories for Bobby Kotick to make his, Squeaky clean image. Squeaky clean. Which, of course, it's... And yet he somehow is still employed doing the probably same thing nowadays. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it, 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 he, the, the thing, the, the kicker is that he knew. It's not that he was, like, oblivious. He's like, oh, my God, I can't believe this was happening in my company. He was actually a participant... <laughs> It's some of the sexual harassment and mistreatment of employees. Like he was, at, and yet he still has a job. You know, Wonders it's the boy zone. Made. It's a self-perpetuating cycle in a way. Okay, let's talk about something a little bit funnier, a little bit uh, more, I guess, hopeful or silly. There's... there's no hope left in the world. I thought. I thought it was all it, gone, it, It's it's down to just a smidge. Just down okay. to a smidge. Uh, anyways, um, Eric Wolpow uh, is a co-writer for Portal, a fun little series that if you've oh, ever no. Portal's a great game. So there's two of them out there, and he wants he wants very badly to be part of a Portal Three. Yes. Now. He said, uh, I'd work on another portal in a second, but I can't do it, unfortunately. I could advocate for it, but it's not going to help. The problem is with 300 employees, and I don't know exactly the breakdown between the production side versus the steam business side versus legal, 
There's a lot of opportunity cost for taking 75 people and trying to get a game made. As much as it seems like Valve often is a bunch of people sitting around sipping gin and tonic, everyone's working. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to lie. That's how I picture Steam is they just sit around all day. There are 300 people literally watching the like ticker go up. Another game sold. Another game sold. We don't have to do anything. Another game sold. Just sitting in our asses. Another game sold. More income. That's kind of high picture steam. Now, of course, his, 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 his additional thing is, is Pearl 3 going to make uh, Counter-Strike Go money? Probably not. But maybe not every game needs to make Counter-Strike Go money. Gabe Newell, if you're listening, I'd really enjoy trying to make another Portal game before I get too old. Oh, yes. I, I don't know about you, but I love Portal 1 and Portal 2. Um, they're also they're like they're just fun puzzle games mm -hmm. uh, with a little bit of story and humor in them. They are definitely if you have not played the portals, you should go pick them up. I'm sure they're dirt cheap on Steam. Uh, if not, they're always on sale. Definitely worth playing those games. Ryan literally Ryan says literally never making Half-Life 3 shakes fits the sky. Once again, if and this is a big if. If VR were to finally like lock in and be that must have video game thing, because right now it's a great peripheral for people who can afford it. But if VR became a must, Game Newell will be like Half Life 3, here we go. Because Half Life 3 is gonna be VR. But Valve has its own VR head kit to like try to But but sell the consumer things. but the consumers there's not enough consumers to dictate the need for Half-Life 3. If it became a build must. It and they will come. Exactly. Yeah. Build it and they will come when you release Half-Life 3 on the VR headset. And that will be what pushes it over the top. Actually, side question. I don't know the, I really don't know the answer to this. And if anyone out there does, please, you know, message me now or later. How, how does the Steam... Uh, what do you call it? Handheld. Uh, does it do VR? The Steam Deck. Yeah. Um, no idea. Because I don't think I don't think it, I mean I, it's, it's an impressive machine, but I don't know if it would be able to handle VR. Hmm. Technically, it's possible. We've seen people jury rig it, but we don't design the optimize to the Steam Deck for VR, which is not I mean, for a handheld device. I, it's not surprising. Yeah. Um, no. To be able to output the massive polygons um, would be very hard for the Steam Deck to do. Well, the thing to, to keep VR headsets, first of all, one, uh, slightly affordable, and two, not heavy as fucking sin. The sure. vast majority of the computation power is going to come through your PC or whatever your device is. Yeah. It's not going to come through the headset. So I was just curious, you know. But, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. My problem is I still get, I, every once in a while, I'll try playing like a VR kit. And I mm -hmm. still get motion sickness. Like that still for me has not been solved within about five minutes. I am in rough shape. Well, a lot of people say that one of the biggest hurdles is that you can't see your feet. And that really mm. kind of throws you for a loop because you can't get um, like height perception. Um, and that's probably for me then what's doing it is that's just, yeah, I could see that. Uh, Ryan has a meta quest too. Bastard. Um, you know, I have to say that with, with watching all these NBA playoff games, the ones that I can watch, <laughs> they have been just dropping ad after ad after ad for the um for one of the vr headsets uh and i'm like you know mm. it's, you know if i had the money that's the big if if i had the money yeah oh i i hear that yeah uh, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to do a friendly reminder. Uh, we're getting, we're inching ever, ever closer to the month of May. And in, in the month of May is a phenomenal, amazing convention called Momocon, which happens at the Georgia World Congress Center. 
uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, from May 26th to the 29th. Uh, it is one hell of a convention. Ultra Confusion loves it to death. We are once again going to do a panel there. That'll be Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. Don't know the room yet. We also have a fan table uh, where you can come say hey and talk video games with us the entire weekend. But definitely go to Momocon. And if you're curious about the health and safety protocol, as of right now, masks are required in mm. all indoor areas of Momocon 2022 uh, by Momocon for all participants. Interesting. Uh, Does that have anything about vaccine mandate for going or like passport or anything? They, they, they they're just doing masks. I, I don't see any additional thing. Um, uh, there, uh, you the removal of masks while sta stationary and eating or drinking I in designated areas gotcha. is permitted. Uh, oh and then, of course, it can't just be any mask. They do have you know requirements for the mask. Uh, the masks have two or more layers of washable, breathable fabric. Completely cover your mouth and nose. Fit snugly against the side of your face and don't have gaps. Have a nose wire to prevent air from leaking out of the top of your mask if possible. I will tell you, as an as someone who wears glasses, that nose wire is a must. Otherwise, I won't be able to see you after about two or three breaths because all my breath will be ventilated up and into my glasses and then nothing to see. Straight. See, that's how you know you have a mask on. Can you see today? Exactly. Uh, and, of course, uh, now uh, face shields alone are not permitted. Uh, and the costume masks that have vents, hoods, do not meet the, the above standards, you'll have to wear an, a secondary mask with any costume. We got to look out for the safety of everyone. I totally, I, I will be wearing my, um, uh, my cowboy bebop one and maybe an additional one underneath it. If, if I feel that I need to up my game. It will level up. Yeah. Anyways. Um, I felt like there was one more story that I had to cover, but I can't remember what it is now. How do you not remember, sir? It's, it is video games. Well, the problem, sir, is called reality. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. Um, damn, I had another question. Now I can't remember what it is. Oh, okay. So it's totally like Star Wars nerdiness that's just bugging the piss out of me, okay? Yeah. And I talked about this with one of our very good friends of the show, Jason, who you've seen on many Thursday Night Hangouts. Uh, he is a huge Star Wars uh, person. I've been playing... If you have been watching me on Twitch, you'll have noticed I've been playing a lot of the Star Wars... Uh, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, which is phenomenal on the Switch. Um, and... I don't understand. I really don't understand how the Sith Lords or the Sith still exist because there's only there's a Sith Lord and there's an apprentice and that's it. It's not like you have multiple Lords and one apprentice, not like the Jedi who have multiple master Jedis and then they have their apprentice. There's just one. Like how the how are they not how do how they keep sticking around? It's two people. Yeah, we're so secretive. But yet you you come out and you keep attacking the the existing Jedi and losing. So how the hell are you still alive? Anyways, that's my little. Speaking of Star Wars, did you see uh, Princess Padme's new look in the Thor movie? That's not Princess Padme. That'd be what? Jane Foster. What? It's the same. What? It's the same actress. Are you sure? It's the same actress, but her name is Jane. And. Yes, I was very aware that the very next one she was going to be wearing um, Thor's armor. Uh, and the reason for that, if you are a comic book nerd, you you probably already know this, is that Jane has an incurable disease. Uh, I think it's cancer. Due to all the, you know, the, the interdimensional shit that she's done, uh, dealt with. And the only way to continue to allow her to live and basically put the the illness or cancer in kind of like a stasis mode is for her to assume to be in thor's uh armor asgardian armor yep 
and she has got some guns now. Well, you got to throwing that shit, that damn thing, that hammer around. Apparently, that's maybe that's her workout regimen. It's just been lifting Thor's hammer every day, all day. And it's worked. you have to have a good heart, though. Damn it, not anyone could pick it up, which mm. was obvious in uh, one Endgame. of the Avenger movies. Was it Age of Ultron? Yeah, I think it was Age of Ultron. Pretty sure, because that's what Vision was. Vision appeared, and he I picked the up the hang hammer and just handed it to Thor. Thor's going, "Oh!" Or he could just be Cap. True. Cap was able to move it and use it later. Spoiler! No. Oh, speaking of the MCU, unfortunately, the the follow up to um, uh, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. Uh, is going to be delayed by another year. Oh, I'm, I'm, I did not know that. That was a great. The first one was a great movie, and I'm sad that it's going to be you know delayed. But hopefully, you know, it's the same quality. I yeah, someday. I really lately outside of basically like strategy games like Civilization and. Uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. I haven't really that's really all I've been playing. Terrible, Zeus. Terrible. No, because I found a true love to give back to my soul. Oh God. Uh, I, I just I just found the story I wanted to talk about. Uh, that is that um like in the early two thousands there was this company that that basically was just dropping game episodic games and could not do any wrong. Uh, Telltale Games was a phenomenal company. Of course, it is gone now because they just got over their heads because they were trying to do too much and the quality started suffering. And episodic games, uh, you're trying to bank on the fact that people want to see the next episode of said game. And yeah. there are a couple of games that kind of missed the mark. Uh, one of the games that was by Telltale Games when it was originally released was Tales from the Borderlands. Um, and Gearbox announced at PAX East uh, that there will be a sequel to um, Tales of the Borderlands. And uh, if for those of you who didn't see, who didn't play the first one, I think uh, Tales of the Borderlands was released uh, 2014 through 2015. Um, it told the story of a Hi Hyperion employee, Reese, and Cool Connors, Fiona. As they work to get together to do what else? Open a vault. Uh, and they're saying that, of course, this time around, it is going to be the only. Um, it's it's. I mean, it's it's going to be in-house developed. Uh, so it's like a, it's this whole thing that they're going to take the telltale approach apparently, uh, but it's all it's going to be by Gearbox. Um, it will stall star all new characters but other than that there's not a whole lot of information the interesting thing about tale ta uh, the um tales of the borderland it fit between borderlands 2 and borderlands 3 with some of the story elements so i'd be very interested to see if it's going to uh, how this one is going to um uh factor in if it's going to do tiny tina's wonder world or anything uh ryan says best game for the meta in his own opinion is either swarm or resident evil 4 vr Oof. Resident Evil 4 on VR just sounds like I'd be scared shitless. And I'm not sure that's a good idea. Like, I don't need VR to to know that I was scared shitless of whatever the Resident Evil was on the GameCube. And to be, like, immersed in that world? Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. I, no. It's a, I'd have nightmares. I'm Look, sure. I, I jumped out of my, I jumped clear out of my seat the first time. I, I like, I, I cannot remember the exact Resident Evil. It was on the GameCube. The first time I saw just the the very tip of the chainsaw appear over my shoulder and then cut across, and I knew I had just been sliced in two. I was like, nope. Uh, he says it's incredibly intense, which is probably... Zelius does uh, uh -huh. need his sleep, uh, and I'm pretty sure that that would cause him not to sleep forever. No, I, no, I have nightmares, very vivid. I would need medication. Uh, okay, so um, 
Well, when Zelius and I, uh, I don't want to say back in the day because it makes it sound really freaking old, but back in the day, <laughs> Zelius was, that's Resident Evil 4. Thank you, Ryan. Um, Zelius was huge into this horror movie series called Scream. Oh, gosh. Did you ever watch the, the, the new Scream? I have not. I actually want to. It looks like it is a throwback and back to the OG Scream. Um, so I want to, but like my problem, like my media watching habits are basically, unless it's like on Netflix or Amazon prime, it like doesn't exist to me right now. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I just haven't gone to the theaters and I just don't have any other services. Um, it's kind of where I'm sitting at. So I do want to see it. Um, but yes, there was a time when I could basically recite the entirety of the screen movie verbatim oh i know i'm very aware zealous very aware yes. um let's see i i of course because i have kids i've got like i've got hulu i've got netflix and i've got disney plus though i have fought, like i really need to i need to utilize my disney plus like pronto because in Lego Star Wars, uh, Skywalker Saga, I have now played through the equivalent of episode four, five, six, one, two, three. And I need a re, uh, I need to refresh on the final three. Uh, cause you? I can't remember if I Do actually you? watched the last two or not. That's it's cause it's fine. If you don't actually watch the movies, I'm just saying, dude, dude, uh, as painful yeah. as episode one, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, especially, well, the end of episode one, episode two in its entirety, and the episode three in its entirety, you know, I still watched it. So I need to make sure that I actually watch this, the you're, second you're and third last one. Well, I mean, I don't remember all the characters. I don't know all the characters, too. I mean, you had Kylo Ren. Yeah. Uh, you had Ray. Uh-huh. Does anybody else really matter? Finn. I mean, Poe, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Leia, whoa, Chewbacca. Whoa. Are you sure? I thought they were just in the OG3. Nope. How'd they come back? That makes no cinematic sense. Uh, Lando Calrissian. Was he in the in the last three? I don't even know. I think Lando was in the very last one, if I remember right. I'll just rewatch uh, Rogue One. I think I'll be fine. That's smart. Actually, I bet there's like a fan supercut that like boils down the last three into like an hour of like what you actually need to know. I'm sure that there's a fan supercut of the uh, episode one, two, and three that takes about 25 minutes that boils down the important parts. It's literally just the fight between the Sith Lord and uh... Obi Wan Kenobi. Yes, thank you. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Darth Maul or Darth Maul or the Darth that became, you know. No, it was the Darth Maul fight. Okay, so Darth Maul, he fought two different Jedi. He was defeated by Obi Wan. We did. Def- he did battle two Jedi. Damn it, Liam Neeson! You're not supposed to die. You're supposed to be a vengeful prick that goes after the killer or kidnapper of your daughter. Though at that time he wasn't doing that. But anyways. <laughs> he's still doing that in movies today oh no i know i know i know very I think, well i don't know how many takens there are but i feel like every once in a while i'm like oh it's oh no no he, he's he stopped doing takens and he's just oh. it's it's a he'll they slap a different name on it and they it's basically taken but like in the snow or yeah, at sea like the same movie yeah. every time i see like a preview for liam neeson movies i'm like oh it's it's a it's kind of taken but but not, but is, but isn't, but is. But now he's grizzled and old and he has emotions and stuff. I don't know who you are. He's like I don't know you where you are. Hard. But I have a, I have a special set of skills and I'll fuck up your life. For doing something that I didn't like. You didn't put that second layer of wax on my car. I'm coming after you. Wax off. Wax off. Wax on, wax off. Anyways, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're at the end of the show. Um, uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in to the Alter Confusion Thursday Night Hangout. For myself, Charlie, and Zelius, it's been a pleasure giving you to come our heads, our mouths, and, of course, 
Our hearts will be back next Thursday for another Ultra Confusion Thursday Night Hangout. Remember, kids, keep on gaming in the free world. Amen to that, brother. <laughs>